video is going to blossom. Every possible type of motion picture will be put out in home video, and as many people as you have in the world, that's how many interests there are, and they will want to see everything. It was always a bit of a thrill to pop one of these VHSs into your machine and, and, and see a film you couldn't see anywhere else. I was there when it was like thriving, and then there when it started dying out, so it was there for me to just kind of like, okay, like, oh, you come with me. We're still watching tapes nowadays. I mean, we're not in our flying cars, but we're still watching VHS tapes from, you know, 1976. Why VHS? Why not? The people who hate tapes. And it's like you're asking them, like, hey, do you guys have, like, diapers filled with vomit? And they're like, oh, no, no, why would we have those? If, if we don't get this stuff, no one else will, and that's really scary. It's sort of like, I guess, some people are compelled to our volunteered animal shelters and save poor little kitty cats. And I felt compelled to go to thrift stores and save those poor, lonely VHS tapes. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, that smells so good. And you know what? I only paid about $1.25 for this tape. So VHS has always been just like fucking my balls. That's just my, that's my manhood right there. <laughs> You're watching television. We're watching select division. Four hour video cassette recorder from RCA. Selectivision gives us the best of television. We've recorded the best action, the best movies, even the best educational shows. Sometimes there's nothing good for them on television. <laughs> but there's always something good on Selectivision. It was 1977, and it was like the SOS came in over the phone, like, beep, 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 you know, VCR, you know, and we live in the heart of Sopranos land, which, you know, if anybody watches the show Sopranos, you'll kind of understand what I'm saying when it's like, you know, use the term fall off a truck. So apparently, and like as a kid, I didn't know what was going on. Apparently this VCR fell off a truck in 1977. And all of a sudden, you know, my dad was like, he was in the kitchen counting money. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, oh, we're buying a video recorder. I'm like, really? It was 500 bucks and it changed my life. I was four years old and my grandfather brought home a top loader VCR and we could not believe that, that you could watch movies at home like we couldn't get our heads around it and just not just because I was four but like you know my 58 year old grandmother was like losing her mind she's just like so anything anything we want to watch and my grand, you know it was based of course at that time on the availability of any given title which was pretty sparse but as the ex expanding selection became available like it really seemed like this bold new world and you know there's that talk about people thinking like TVs were gonna replace movies you know back in the 50s like it really felt like home video was this massive change if it's obvious what your family wants for christmas when video hit i was like right on top of this thing i mean i went out and bought the first my first uh, video recorder was about this big weighed about 90 pounds i paid about 800 bucks for it had like big piano keys you depressed a wired remote and the first two tapes i bought were 60 bucks a piece it was night of the living dead and assault on precinct 13. And these movies, they were all like 70 and 80 dollars. And I remember some rich woman coming in saying, I don't know if I should buy Nashville or MASH. And then she went, I'll buy both. And I was like, wow, that's the luckiest, richest lady I've ever seen in my life. Hi, I'm Michael Pollack, and I'd like to personally invite you to see the all new Colonial House Apartments, where I've created an exciting new lifestyle in beautiful Southwest Houston. Move today to the Colonial House Apartments and receive a free video recorder. I used to go to these video stores long before I could ever afford a video machine. And I would just stare at the tapes and drool. And 83 was the real golden year of VHS. And that's when in my towns and all the neighboring towns, uh, every other corner had a mom and pop video store on it. They just popped up. The mom and pop video stores, which were really the main, they were like bookstores. You'd go in, you'd browse, you'd, you'd find an interesting title. It might be uh, Bloodsucking Freaks or it might be uh, the Queen Elizabeth story. But uh, there was a variety. That's Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, part two.
Friday the 13th, part three, Friday the 13th, part four, and Friday the 13th, part five. I have got to find another job. Oh, can I have one of these? There was a line. You had to wait online, and you had to hope that your tape was in. If you were looking at something and you saw it, you grabbed it. Hey, it's mine. I had it first. I'm very sorry, man. Uh, excuse me, sir. All tapes first come, first serve. I saw serve. it first, and she knows it. Yeah, I remember video stores as being really like a haven. Like, the most exciting places you could walk into would be a video store or a free candy store, which I never found. So, like, and of course, everyone remembers the stuff in the video store that you were thinking, as soon as I'm 18, I'm all over that. Like, I'm gonna rent that like crazy. I mean, it was hard enough for me to get my grandma to let me rent Critters 2, you know? But I remember, of course, like the big box cover for Return of the Aliens Deadly Spawn, just like screaming to me, like, like touch me, you know? Like it really, stuff like that was really just like such incredible forbidden wonder. You know, as a kid, you could go into the store and buy, you know, rent unrated uh, movies, X-rated, uh, and yeah, uh, really extreme stuff, and not have to worry that the you know pop behind the counter was going to refuse you. You know, you couldn't buy a, a Playboy if you were 13, but if you went in for, you know, um, I spit on your grave, uh, they had no problem selling it or, or renting it to you. They should have sold me space. I should have had a bed there. Because I basically lived in these places. I mean, I, I can't joke about that. I was there whenever, whenever I, I'd get home from school or college, and boom, I was at the video store. Yeah. What are you looking for, uh, pal? I'm looking for, what have you got? Horror, that's right. Any horror you got, just name me a uh, horror. Okay, how about 2,000 Maniacs? I saw it. I, I saw it. I saw it. Uh, bloodthirsty butchers. They chop them, they whack them, they no, smack them. No, no, no. Uh, it's obvious you don't got nothing here that I want horror-wise. I came in here for horror, and... You don't get it. You're telling me, buddy. Uh, yeah. that's, that's, that's help me. Listen. How about something just a little bit romantic? You know, I wanted horror. Oh, romantic? Horror. How about, how about love stories? Love stories? All right, well, thank you. Hey, hey, don't touch me! It really was a thrill to own that video store in that period. Then Blockbuster killed it for everybody. What a Blockbuster video! I've never seen 10,000 tapes in one store. There's so much kid stuff. And I can keep them for three evenings. Ordinary video stores don't even come close to Blockbuster Video. So back in the 80s, late 80s or early 90s, Blockbuster all of a sudden became, you know, the monster. Blockbuster was the beginning of the end. Blockbuster was truly the beginning of uh, taking any personality out of video stores out of all that stuff, out of just the entire culture. Blockbuster Video has a policy not to rent R-rated videos to kids. Other tapes even have a youth-restricted viewing sticker, so the CSR spots them easy at the checkout. On top of that... The little guy could not compete with the amount of new releases that Blockbuster was putting on the shelf. So if you had the new uh, Steven Seagal movie, <laughs> You know, they'd have 50 copies, like. Now Steven Seagal is hard to kill. Some of them had a fair selection of tapes, but I feel like they probably only had those tapes because I imagine they absorbed them from some mom and pop shop that they destroyed and bought out. I don't think they had some buyer at the top that was like, headless eyes, this would be good for our customers. You know, like, I don't think they cared. See, what a lot of people don't know is, um, Blockbuster and a couple of these other chains got together with the, with the film companies and said, if we can raise the wholesale price up, and I think Die Hard was the one they did it with, where they, it was some astronomical amount wholesale, all the mom and pop stores could afford is one damn tape. And where Blockbuster had 60 days to pay, they could get 20, 30 copies. How could you buy six copies at $99 of a movie that's gonna have legs for two weeks and then they're gonna want the next first run movie? So that's what killed the mom and pop stores. Porn could have kept us in business, um, but even that, the internet killed, killed that. So as these stores started going down, there we were buying the tapes. Now what these stores would usually do is they would try to recoup as much of their money as possible. They would try and sell the tapes for like 29 bucks. If you just waited a couple of weeks, it went down to 20 bucks, then to 15, to 10. The longer you waited, the more it went down. And we were just looting these places. And I recall one incident, I cannot forget this. I went into this one place and I'm buying up the tapes and the girl who was checking us out, 
was almost in tears. She was like, I guess she was a co-owner or owner of this place. And she was like, we paid $100 for some of these tapes. And she goes, now we're selling them for three. It was like three ninety, whatever she was selling them for, three eighty five. All right, three dollars eighty five cents. This is DVD. And this is what happens when you watch DVD. It's a movie on a disc the size of a CD. The picture is twice as sharp as VHS. DVD came along and stores, you know, just small-mindedly started to ditch all of their VHS. Like, yes, we have DVD. Like, it's here. And they just started making room for the DVD stuff. Really you know, brazenly de destroying their stock of VHS tapes, regardless of whether or not these tapes were movies that had become available on DVD. Because I was working in a video store when they released the very last commercial VHS. It was a history of violence. Oh, yeah. There were a lot of people there that missed VHS. I don't know if it was just obstinance or poverty, but they were not getting DVD players, and they would always come in and say, why isn't this out on VHS? And I'd be like, I know! Right? When the DVD train showed up to town, um, I believe my brother got a DVD player and the movie Gladiator and was like, check this out. My initial reaction was like, shit, I might have to buy one of those, that's really cool. But uh, there was no way I was going to ever give up on the trusty old tape. Luckily, a lot of the movies that I love now, I first saw on VHS when you could barely make out anything. And I wonder if... I would love those movies nearly as much if I saw a nice new remastered clean print of it. You know, if, if, I, if I didn't already have that first impression was something where I could see all the faults in the makeup and I could see just everything crystal clear, I don't think I would have had the same reaction to a lot of these movies. I think videotapes are better than DVD because they're just more durable. And if you can drop a videotape on the ground, it'll still work. If you watch it a hundred times, it might flip at the beginning, but it's fine. But if like a DVD gets like, a little scratch on it, it might just be broken forever. It just will skip and freeze and you can't enjoy the movie. I hate it. Like this thing is built like a tank and it's still like, how old is this? This is probably from 80, okay, 84. It's still like, it still plays. And that is a, a remarkable thing. I watch so many movies that sometimes I'll be in the process of watching multiple movies at once. So I can stop something, put something else in, watch it, stop it, come back to it another time. Um, I find that very pleasurable. I personally don't care for VHS. The DVD is infinitely better because you've got the commentary tracks, you get the history, you get, I just got the full collection of Laurel and Hardy and uh, it's terrific because you get all sorts of history. These are amazing. I don't care if anyone likes these. If I'm the only weirdo on the block with my tapes, that's fine with me. I don't have a problem with that. If no one else appreciated it, if they were all worth nothing tomorrow, I'm still going to enjoy them. I'm going to look at them and get pleasure out of what I feel is the value. You sometimes feel like you're saving them. You're rescuing these tapes from wherever they're sitting. They're getting moldy. They're being ignored. They're not being watched. I'll pull them out of wherever they're sitting and actually watch them. Put them on a shelf. Treat them really special. Make sure the humidity doesn't get too much. Make sure they don't get sunlight on them. I'm protecting these old movies from being ignored, from being lost, from being forgotten about. I kind of panicked and was just like, well, I don't think this movie Reuben and Ed is going to be on DVD anytime soon because it was a huge flop. So I better buy this, you know, while they're getting rid of it. And that's what started my collection. It wasn't like the same thing that drives me in collecting comics or other things, but really just the fear that these movies were just going to be completely unavailable, which is still totally valid. There's movies you can't get. There's just no other format that they're available on. Those tapes that are lost in limbo, that's kind of a shame. I mean, some of those are really good movies. <laughs> I didn't have a vehicle because I was too young. I was just a kid. Uh, I was still, you know, masturbating and stuff. Uh, uh, uh. And then I would go, hey, Dad, um, let's go to the grocery store because grocery stores had used VHS tapes back in the day. Walmart had used VHS tapes. But what does this previously viewed sticker mean? That means you can buy a previously viewed video cassette at a low price and add it to your home library. 
Okay, let's buy it. Yeah! You could buy, you know, Richard Norton movies or Cynthia Rothrock movies for like $5 each, and I just started collecting more and more. I was only collecting my favorites. Um, and then we came upon this farmer's market in a place called Lacey, Washington. I used to live in Washington State. And most of the stuff they sold in there was like homemade baskets and just like crap for stepmoms to buy. And there's this one guy in the corner whose name was Big Daddy. Big Daddy, I think his name was. I think it was, or just, I think his name was Big Daddy. I don't, or yeah, that seems right. Like he was like a weird old guy. He kind of looked like Slim Pickens and he had, I don't know if it was a glass eye or his eye was just like glazed over, but one of his eyes clearly never doesn't work anymore. And he just had a bunch of old VHS tapes because in the 80s he'd own video stores. And now he was like retired and grumpy and just like sitting in the corner of this crappy farmer's market for white people. And he was totally embittered and he just had great tapes. Everything was a dollar. And he was always pushing the porn. He always wanted, he's like, you young boys, you should get the porno. That one's got some serious action in it. Oh, it's so good. And we're like, these awkward nerds. Like, no, no, we don't have, you know, genitals. We just like have a love for these movies. He's like, well, you like all this other trash. Why not some butts? And we're like, no, no, we just want monster movies. That was sort of that was actually the probably the beginning of me re really buying like a lot of collecting a lot of stuff. He was our hero. He was our Jesus back then. Like, you know, people go to church once a week. We went to Big Daddy. I just kept doing VHS because I was like, I'm finding out of print stuff and it's cheap, so I can get more for my buck because I was really into it for like the films. So I just kept going, and then until I'm at the point now where I have, I think, two thousand seven hundred and. 33 films. I know how many tapes I have because I keep track of them and it's numbered. So right now I have 3,912. Last time I counted it was like right at a little over four, 4,000 tapes. How many tapes total? Like 15,000, but most are in my garage. At one point I know what I had about 22,000. Because I, I, I was about 18,000, then I, and, and that's not counting all the, the chunks of like the porno and stuff of like get hits like that, but I overall with all, all my obscure stuff and you know a lot of the PAL stuff, CCAM, yeah, about 22,000. People will make and collect anything, you know, anything, anything that's on the face of the earth, a worm that's crawling on the ground. Somebody will see it, they'll pick it up and say, gee, he's got a nice green spot on his head. They'll take him along and collect him. You know, anything is collectible. So is there any logic to this? No. There are people that were sorry to see VHS go, but I say collectors should have what they want. Anytime something's 20 years old, it then becomes collectible. It's a proven fact in everything. If, even if nobody likes it, 20 years later, someone's going to have a soft spot for it. I think a lot of it is nostalgia, and I think a lot of it is Folks my age, I mean, I'm in my mid-30s, I grew up on VHS. You know, just, just like I did, I grew up on cassette tapes. And so there's a certain percent, you know, percentage of people like me that are always going to have their, their cassette. I mean, me, personally, I got 1,500 VHS tapes at home. I'm never, I mean, I'm never going to get rid of them. They, you know, it's, 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 it's like, like I said, it's like vinyl. It sounds different, it looks different, it feels different. And I think that's how a lot of us grew up watching movies. And so now that we're older, we want to go back to seeing them the way we did it. The VHS, it's a VHS. It's a big old bulky piece of shit that looks awesome. And it's got pops and crackles and you got to adjust the tracking. You can, you know, if you don't have a fucking remote, you're just like, uh, like, okay. And you know, and then there's like cool shit. You get the fucking little video logo blasting up there. And you know, trailers at the end, maybe. You never know at the beginning. Like, look at the colors they're starting to bleed together. Even if it's still like a very new VHS, there's always gonna be a slight bleed and that bleed kind of has very soft organic texture and it just feels closer to the body. Um, so there's just something very skin-like about VHS that isn't with DVD. DVD is more of like a skin graft. So a lot of collectors uh, specifically look for exploitation and horror, so some of the titles that are missing on newer formats might be more obvious to them, but there's a lot of strange, uh, like erotic thrillers and just like really boring dramas that when, you, when you're holding it in your hand and you like take out your phone and look it up on Amazon and go, oh, this didn't come out. Yeah, I want to watch this drama about old people. This sounds rad. I'm looking for everything. I want it all. I want, I want the weirdest stuff. I want the stuff that makes me laugh. I want stuff that's disgusting. I want the goriest stuff. 
a lot of the stuff that appeals to me is stuff with amazing cover art. If it wasn't for the artwork, it was dull, plain covers with nothing on them, I don't know how interested I'd be. The cover art sells it. It, it makes you want it, even if the movie itself is horrific, if it's a total piece of garbage. Um, it's something you gotta have. For example, like Spine or 555. These are not quality movies that you're gonna see anytime soon. These are for hardcore freaks. These are for the VHS nerds that want stuff that goes beyond or does stuff that other movies shouldn't or wouldn't. It's not like people are collecting, like, I gotta have that ET. It's the, the cool looking stuff and because to a large degree, it was driven by the fact that they got a shitty product. We got to, how do we move this crappy movie? It's like we got to, they beefed up the box art and made it look so appealing. And that's something that is like, I'm a sucker for packaging. I wanted the stuff. They got $39 multiple times out of a 13 year old kid. It was so impossible to me that there would actually be a movie on those tapes that matched the insanity of the cover. When I was a little kid, I was just like, it's impossible that this is a film. That this... I remember Evil Speak blew my mind, like the cover of that, which isn't that crazy. It was like, there's a guy touching a computer and Satan is coming out. Like, why? Like, why can't I watch this? I'm sure at the time it was just like some gruff, you know, businessman like, ah, get some more tits on the box, uh, get a knife in there. And like, somehow it worked on me is all I can say. It definitely like created like, like what, horrifying worlds could be inside this box. Like one of the things I talk about in my articles is the artwork being the biggest letdown period. Um, Cannibal Campout, hands down, was the biggest letdown ever when I first got it. You know, you look at the cover, the cover's amazing. I mean, this guy's ripping this chick's throat out. You're like, this movie is awesome. And then you get it and... Man, this movie fucking lied. The cover is just so good and the movie is so bad. Uh, I love VHS covers that lie to you. I used to be tricked all the time and be like, oh man, that movie looks exciting. Oh boy, that's great. And then you watch the movie and you'd be like, this is just some British movie from the 70s. Like, this isn't like some late 80s sex movie like it promised in the box. It, it just, it's really a bummer. Like, when you, like, you find this tape with an awesome, awesome cover, like ninjas exploding out of jeeps with machine guns and stuff and it's that doesn't really happen it doesn't really happen at all like if there's no pictures on the back of the movie then it's probably a lie like the cover's probably lying to you uh if there's not no images from the movie at all and there's a, a lot of that where it would be like oh look at that cover that's gonna be great and it's usually for whatever reason always some awful like british film from the 70s the stuff that i look for when i'm searching for tapes are basically bad decisions that have been released. Uh, the, the types of boxes where you pick it up and you think, I can't believe someone signed off on this. You know, like they, they said like, they saw the box and they went, put it out, like that's it, you know. That's the stuff I look for the most. The bad, art, the bad artwork, the bad decisions. All right, here's what you gotta do. Let's take this movie from 1972 and then we'll get like some lady who was fired from Baywatch to pose on the cover wearing a werewolf mask in 1991. And that's the covers, like that are just a total falsehood and a lie. But that's kind of adorable too, because in a way that's just like another version of a bad idea. It's like an old woman, you know, dressed like Britney Spears. It's like, you're trying to sell this thing that nobody wants, and the way you're trying to sell it is also unappealing to begin with. But, you know, at least you tried. <laughs> it's it's kind of cute. Please leave. What's up? This is Jay from knjhorror.com. Just want to show you my video vault, also known as the horror room. Walk in and start panning around. Well, here it is. Finally get to show it off. I'm proud to be able to do so also. Yeah, this room here carries about, um, about 2200 and when it got full and it's full I had to move on somewhere so I went back to my bedroom and I had shelves that I got from a, um, a video store that was going out of business and they just so happened to fit perfectly in my bedroom so I started just filling those up the total comes to about 4200 in some Anybody who collects horror films is collecting them from a deeper reason than 
oh, I think that's cool because uh, it's a horror film. No, there's something inside you. You want to own all the horror. You want to know all the evil. You want to possess it. Let's kind of look at some special tapes. Jekyll and Hyde together again. It's not something you see every day. <laughs> this one here, this ain't easy to get. Zombie versus Mardi Gras. <laughs> Beads, breasts, blood. Come on, it's perfect. It's what we're all here for. Things, things. Things, things too. It can get confusing in the horror video world. These two things here, they're the same movie. This things here has nothing to do with these things. This things too is a sequel to these, but yet not this one. Up here, you're gonna find the stuff for the true gore hound. The person that says, oh, I like my stuff rough, tough, and bloody. This is it. This right here is the true blood and guts of your, of your collection. When you have this particular row in your collection, you don't go there much. Every once in a while though, you want to go there. I piss on your grave, I puke on your grave, I spit on your corpse, I piss on your grave. I mean, these, this, you can tell what you're getting when you, before you ever even put this in the VCR, because they're trying to tell you that this, and this is the game playing's over um, these aren't for fun, these are for real. So when you put this in, you know, you sit down, you, you come away changed a little bit. You're not the same person you were before you watched the movie. When you get done, you're a little different. Once you start getting a, a couple movies, you know, you, you pick up this, you pick up that, and you pick up this, and you start, with me, I started noticing that there were things that were similar, like, and that's where I started looking at labels, where I'd say, hey, you know, this company put out this, and they also put out this, both these movies are just awesome. So, so what else have they put out? You know, maybe this movie, you know, maybe this third movie that they put out is awesome. So then you would just, I would start just picking up anything on those labels, and I'd, you know, become fascinated with it, and. You know, I'd, I'd start running through the catalog numbers and notice that I had a missing one, and it's like, well, what could that movie be? There's definitely video companies that I get a little flutter in my chest when I see one of the tapes, regardless of what the content of the tape is. Like, there's a lot of times you just really like the aesthetic of the company, and probably the one that I get most excited about is Mogul Video. A favorite video cassette release company would be Vestron Video. Super Video. Tempe Video. Key Video. Cinema Home Video. Thriller Video. Force Video. Oh, magnetic Video. AIP Home Video. Regal. Monterey. Donna Michelle. Like, let Us Entertain You. Video Gems. Camp. Gorgon. A Paragon. Mita. Unicorns. World. World Vision. Prism. United. Continental. Lightning. I also like the company VCR that did Big Box. And the company's just called VCR, what do we call our VHS company? I don't know, VCR. Like, probably a terrible idea, <laughs> but it's like, a, they put out really fun, great stuff. Uh, there's a company called Camp Home Video, and they sent me a copy of a movie called Death Row Diner, and it starred Michelle Bauer, and it was just atrocious, terrible effects, really bad acting. Oh, grandfather. Uh -huh. That was over 40 years ago. Uh -huh. And since then, a real creep has taken over the studio. Uh -huh. And he's turning out bad pictures. Bad pictures? This girl I was dating at the time, uh, her father had a voracious appetite to, you know, for videos. It could be any kind of video. He didn't necessarily like horror movies, but he liked, uh, he, he liked to watch stuff, especially if he didn't have to pay for it. So getting good with the family, I'd always bring over my videos. No matter how bad they were, he would watch them. I'm hungry! Uh, a few days later, I, I get a call from uh, the first person I lent the movie to says, you know, at the end of Death Row Diner, the film ended, and then another film came on that the, the, the distributor must have taped over before sending you this video. And I says, oh, okay, what was the other movie? He says, it was a gay porno movie. Okay. And, oh, shit, I lent that to my 
my future father-in-law. I hope he didn't make it to the end of the movie because then he would see this hardcore gay action going on. What company had the coolest titles and the coolest art, something that you could display? And I mean, hands down, it was Wizard. Head and shoulders above the rest would be Wizard video. Wizard, of course. Wizard. Be wizard. 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 Visit. Well, visit. Oh, what? Well, Wizard video. Let's start it over so I don't sound weird. I mean, Wizard took the cake. The intro to Wizard. You know, you had the little coming together and the guy flicking his finger and you know the wizard doing his magic. It's just. A taste of things to come, you're like, uh oh, you know, the wizard flicked the shit, now we're gonna get scared. When you see a wizard video big box for the first time, if it's minty and nice and it's got really clean artwork, I don't know how you can't be attracted to it. I don't know how you can't just want to rip it off the shelf and run home with it. And for those of us that grew up seeing those in the store, you know, it's it's your dream come true, being able to take one home, being able to walk away with one and have it on your own shelf and make your own little video store in your house. I remember actually one time at a uh, flea market there was a guy who had several like beat up wizard boxes or wizard stuff for sale. And then he, um, I don't know if he ran a distributorship, but he came to my, I was like 12 years old at the time, but I was like, I wanna buy more of the, and he was like, oh, I got a bunch of those. And so later on he came to our house and like sold, and like my parents let him in. <laughs> like, uh, he sold me a bag full of wizard videos. I'd like to know if there are video companies that put out one tape and just like completely lost all of their money. Like, oh, we'll just put our son's college savings into this. What could go wrong? And they put out one tape in a big box and then we're just like, oops, you know. Did you know even Tampax got into the VHS game? This is how, this is how big VHS, this is why in 2012, we're still able to go into a store and pick through 4,000 VHS tapes because it was so big when it happened. And there's so much stuff still out there that never made it to DVD. It's yeah. our job. I don't think Tampax VHS. Tampax VHS never made it to DVD. No. I do organize my collection. I organize it in several different ways. Primarily, I file everything alphabetically. I have certain genres filed separately. I have uh, martial arts and my exploitation collection filed separately. There's not really a method to the madness. Um, there is to me, but not to somebody who hasn't been putting them up on the shelves themselves. If I got one, and I did, let's just talk about this. Uh, this is a, this right here is vampire hookers. It's also known as Night of the Bloodsuckers. So obviously it's gonna to have to go near it. So Night of the Bloodsuckers was already right there. So when I came in, I just had to pull, I had to find one that could go. I pulled it out, slid it down, put my vampire hookers directly beside my Night of the Bloodsuckers, and went and took the other one back to the other room and had to make room for it. Once I hit a thousand, I, I asked for a a label maker from my mom for Christmas, and her being awesome got me one. So I just went ape shit. So I have like sub sub genres: slasher, power tools, killer animals, full moon worth buying, mad doctors, a rape and revenge section, zombies, appliances, holiday slasher films, medical horror, occult, supernatural, bums, called get a job, you shit your pants. I have too many. Like Dormarth room where like everything has its little typed up label and even has some funny names for sections. It's, it's beautiful. It's great. Like it's amazing. I love it. And I like because I like the idea of like I feel like a Sasquatch movie that just know exactly where all the Sasquatch. You don't have to, have to remember, especially if you own a lot of movies. You don't have to remember like what is the Sasquatch movies. People can do like the alphabetical, but if you're looking for a certain genre or a certain type of movie, if you get in a feeling to watch a certain type of movie, you're not just going to be like, oh, that's definitely in the Fs. Well, as you can tell, super into segregating my big boxes for my clamshells, and I like company. Um, really kind of like mediocre, like OCD, like I just a tiny little enough where I fucking hate big box, you know, like little slip sleeve, clamshell, big box, slip sleeve, slip sleeve, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't like that, man. I like, you know, I mean, look at that, dude. That's just filling the space, dude, and having everything the way it is. So what I do is I, 
you know, all my clamshells, fucking hard cases, whatever, organized by company, by size, and then with all like my fucking slip sleeves, um, I alphabetize. Oh man, motherfucker. You know, I don't think ahead ever. I usually think about a lot of things before I do them. Um, I never put space, so when I get new titles, I can just like jam them in there. So I have to move every motherfucking thing. It takes, at this point, it takes like a whole fucking day, dude. Like seriously, if I had fucking money, I would just hire some like fucking little art student kid to come in here and just like fucking make my fucking photocopies, you know, send my emails, ship out my packages, and organize my fucking VHS collection. I decided to rearrange my room one day and I'm you know, moving stuff around, you know, you have these big shelves and you don't want to pull down all your tapes and then have to put them back up. So kind of try to jimmy the whole shelves. And I hear a noise as I have this one in front of me. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And then all of a sudden everything just explodes because the one that I couldn't see behind it had actually started falling towards me like a domino and I couldn't see it because it was blocked with the other one. So it hit this one, VHS tapes flying out, smacking me in the face, I fall on the ground, I have two th full things of VHS tapes land on me, had like cuts all up, black eye, and like, so almost a true death by VHS, I'm convinced. I was in Chicago three days ago with Lars Nilsson, who's another VHS collector, and we went in the store that was like specialized in selling used movies, and we went up to this girl that was in there who was probably like 23 and like, super alternative culture, you know? And so we figured maybe she'll understand. And we just said, hey, do you guys have any videotapes? And she looked at us, she's like, uh, like VHS tapes? We're like, yeah. And she goes, those are obsolete. And she enunciated it as if to like really disregard uh, us as humans. There's people out there who are like, they don't make VCRs, why, why would you buy VHS tapes? And I'm like, no, they're still there. You don't just throw something away when a new format comes along. When DVD came out, you don't take VHS and just chuck it out the door. You have to appreciate that. It's just like our um, World War I and World War II heroes. Uh, you have to appreciate them. They, they came before our time, and they, they set the precedent for who we are today and where we stand. The usual reaction when someone stops by and checks out the room is like, holy smokes. You know, it's you've got more tapes than the video store had, or oh my God, I haven't seen that since the 80s, or can you, can you loan this to me? Or it's like, what the hell have you done? <laughs> you've spent all your money doing this? This is, this is what it is for you. Dude, there's Blu-ray, dude, there's DVD. What the hell's wrong with you, you know? People come in here and you know, nine times out of 10, they're just like, wow. No, no, one, no one's ever come in here and been like, Whoa, what the fuck, dude? Why are you like wasting all this space? Get some DVDs. Like, don't you have a sick booklet of stuff? Like, then you could like put other stuff up on the wall. And then it's like, out, out. Uh, I think I've just, I don't, when, when people ask me why I collect this stuff, I just ignore them. I mean, not because I'm better, I just, I'm sick of explaining it after a while. I used to try to justify it with people. Like, I used to say, like, well, and as it turns out, 45% of films released on VHS still have not made it to the DVD format, you know, and you like try to, explain it, but there's still just like this blank idiot stare. Cause I mean, most people these days don't even know how to read anymore. So like much less try to understand a basic concept of somebody else's enthusiasm. Well, my mom, my mom is a very, my mom is very understanding of my collecting of movies. Cause she, I got it from her. Like she has a whole closet of just of horror videotape. She loves like hammer horror films in any fifties, like sci-fi horror. And so she would like, when I would go to buy a bunch of stuff, she would buy a bunch of stuff too. I never tell my parents about tapes I'm buying. Because they're always like, well, how much did you pay? Like $10? I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? It's like a $100 tape. I'm like, I got for 50 bucks. They're like, $50? Why'd you spend that much? I'm like, tape's rare as hell. I'm like, are you kidding? Brian, my best friend, he's had situations where girlfriends like basically can't handle it and they want to break up with him. It's like me or the tapes. And of course, he still has the tapes. <laughs> There was one, like most, every lady I've dated uh, has been very tolerant of my weird like movie obsession, but I had one that kind of, I would come home with like a garbage bag of stuff and lay it out and they would just sort of frown and they kind of knew that I wasn't gonna really hang out with them that weekend. I get the look from her that's like, like more tapes, but it could be worse. I could like sports, you know? <laughs> There's, 
it's going to be really tough for me to let go and back away from doing something I've done for years and years and years and years. If I were to walk past a rack of VHS and not at least scan through it, I feel like I'm dying inside. That's sad for me. It's it's upsetting. It's kind of messed up. It's not. It's just like a habit. It's like I don't even think about it. Like I see a tape, and if I don't have it, and it looks good, I have to have it. If it's got a good cover, I have to have it. You almost go through withdrawal if you go for a little bit without picking up anything new. It's like, oh, all right, I need to do something. I need to get out of here. I need to find something. Yeah, you can stop. Anybody can stop if they wanted to. It's just um, I wouldn't want to stop because it brings so much joy, but. Uh, it really does. It brings a lot of happiness to my life. Like I, I got up, like I had an apartment one time, and it was pathetic. I mean, I didn't have shelves up at the time, so it was just stacks. I mean, all the way to the ceiling of just tapes. And I did a huge purge then, and it, I remember like a week after I did the purge, I felt like a family member died. I just had that gut feeling inside of me that I was like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I would rather die than sell off my video collection. You know, I mean, it really has become like a real habit. Like when people you know, make analogies with using, you know, like, oh, his record problem, it's like heroin for him. And it's like now VHS has really gotten to the point of where people are as obsessive as record collectors. I'm Bradley Cranzo, and I'm the owner and manager of the Bradco Video Store, which is located here in my basement. I never intended to have a video store in my basement. I just, I don't know, it felt right. I always like going into a video store and, you know, just messing around looking through titles and renting. There's a feeling that you have when you're in the video store and you're going through the movies and you're trying to figure out what you want to watch that night. It's, I can't even explain it. It's almost like when you go downhill kinda and you get like that sort of um, butterfly in your stomach type of feeling. I don't know if that's, an, an exact description of what it is, but it just feels so good to have a video store. God, so many videos, such a large selection at the Bradco Video Store, which is what you're seeing right now. Right now we're in the action section and just so many great titles here that I've amassed over the years. Operation Nam with Donald Pleasance, that's a really uh, good one. Or at least I think it's good, most people probably say it's crap. Now this is the horror section, which is definitely my favorite section. Guys, oh, this one is a direct-to-video classic in my opinion. Wood Chipper Massacre. Right, now we're in the drama section. Not one of my favorite sections, but we have some good titles here. Back, uh, back. Here we have one of the most entertaining things down here in the video store, and that's the Blockbuster Gumball Machine. This baby I acquired just recently, within the past uh, three months. The Blockbuster by me on St. George's Ave in Linden was going out of business, and they had two gumball machines. Unfortunately, I got the one that didn't have the key to it. Okay. Come on. Hey, blue, my favorite color. There you go. That's good. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> All right, so now we're going over to my uh, video store counter. This counter right here I got from my friend Mike who used to own the Palmer Video in Kenilworth, New Jersey. Uh, he sold me this for practically nothing. The stipulation of course was I had to go there and take it away myself. And the counter was so big, as you can see, I actually had to cut it in half just to get it down my basement. And it was crazy, but it was worth it. As you can see, I've got the full effect going here. In front of me I have, not VHS, these are all beta tapes that you see here. Got my old Epson computer from 1990. And this computer is so old that it doesn't even have a mouse. Anytime you're in here scrolling through it, you have to just use the up and down, left and right arrow keys to move. And that's basically it. And we also have a, a movie review book here for anybody who wants to come to Bradco Video and check over a movie before you rent it. Make sure you're not renting something bad. And behind the counter is where I keep all of my porno titles. We have VHS and Betamax porn for uh, rent here, as you can see. And overall, I mean, I just really love movies, and that's why I got into collecting so many videos and basically building my own video store in the basement. Watching a movie and renting it, it's kind of like a, 
I don't know, it's just, it's fun and it, it feels like something that's natural and should be around forever. Even though video stores are going out of business. I think it's going to come back. It's like anything else. It goes away for a while, but at some point, a lot of people start saying they miss it. And before you know it, somebody brings it back full blast. And everything goes full circle. Whatever is gone will not be gone forever. It will come back. VHS, which is probably the most maligned format of any entertainment since the 8-track, has also fostered this world where people are spending like more than their month's rent on a single videotape. Back in the day, you could get a video for 15 bucks and feel like you were spending some money. And today, that same video might cost you um, $150, no joke. You get two or three people that want the same tape. I mean, that's all it takes. And the thing will go through the roof. It's just whoever has the bigger wallet. I've never spent like more than $20 on like a pair of shoes. Like I don't buy, like, I, I'm not a rich man. I basically don't go over $15, that's my limit. Yeah, I only pay like 20 bucks, you know, tops for anything. 30 bucks for a tape, like I try to draw that line, because otherwise you just end up like selling plasma, you know, or like selling children. The most was 60 bucks. Every once in a while there's that tape that I, you know, I just know I never see. I look for it every fucking day, you know, search for ev everywhere for it all the time. and. I mean, most I spend is like a hundred bucks on a tape. You know, if you have a job, I mean, what is that hundred bucks? It's a sacrifice, but I mean, if you needed to complete your collection. This blew my mind. Somebody spent six hundred dollars for Tales from the Quadruple Zone. Tales from the Quad Z Zone. Quad, quad, you know, everybody has a problem saying it. Tales from the Quad Dead Zone is the tape that everyone and his brother wants to get their grubby little pans on. It doesn't matter if it sucks. It doesn't matter if it's cut. It doesn't matter if it's covered in slime and goo in some crusty dude's basement. You're gonna go there. You're gonna spend money. You're gonna, whatever you have to do, whatever shit you have to say to get your grubby hands on that, you're gonna do it because it's that fucking rare and everybody wants it. Nobody famous in it, no plot. Uh, there's a ghost kid, I remember. There's a ghost kid that magically appears on the couch. And I think even at one point, maybe before he appears or after he disappears, it seems like there's an indentation in the couch. Otherwise, um, I don't know why it's worth so much money. I guess it's only because it's so rare. There's probably, I would say, a hundred copies of Tales from the Quad Dead Zone in the whole world, maybe. I think Quad Dead Zone is the one that, that's the rarest of them all. I really do. Oh, no! Oh, my God! Tales from the Quad Ed Zone is, it, that's 10 out of 10. It doesn't get any better than that. That thing, that thing, sum, that, Tales from the Quad Ed Zone sums up my love for this stuff, really, because you have no idea what is gonna happen next, why it was made. For the most part, you don't really know much even about the filmmakers, and you just can't stop watching it. It's incredible. I actually even, just to show how big of an idiot I am, I mean, I, the freaking 
cover. Quad Dead's on my arm. So. Quad Dead is a movie that made a big splash on the VHS scene when a guy bought it for six hundred and seventy dollars or something. Right, it was like just below seven hundred dollars. But the last copy of Tales from the Quad Dead Zone I bought was in really good shape. It had one sticker on it. I bought it for two dollars. And the ironic thing is I bought it at a bookstore that sold VHS tapes and they always uh, looked up the prices on Amazon and eBay of what these tapes went for. So somehow the lady probably typed it in and was like, this movie's not showing up, must not be worth anything. But I was like, hey, wait a minute, Chester Turner, hmm. So I put it on eBay immediately. I was super excited and thought I was actually going to own it and I was like really happy for a week and initially I was actually one of the original bidders and it was at like 30 bucks and I was like max bid 100. These guys were all writing to me and going would you take $100 the next day? Would you take 150 a couple hours later? Would you take 200? Okay Eric I'll give you $400 for this tape and I was like guys you're not getting this VHS tape for any amount of money you got a bid on it. A day later it was at like 150 and I'm like 200. At one point, I watched the movie a second time. I was like, I better watch this again. I'd hate to sell it to somebody. And they go, Eric, the movie's all staticky. The picture's jumping. The Tales from the Quad Dead Zone doesn't work. Like, as it kept going, it kept going and slowly rising. Then one day, I'm like, I really, really want this. I've never paid that much for a tape in my life, and I never will. But I was like, 300. And then it, I got outbid, and like, someone had a higher tab on it. So I was like, OK, they can have it. I will never have this, and I don't like my life. I actually, I stepped that up to 450. I mean, I was willing to go, maybe even a little further. In fact, probably to be honest, if my finances were a little different, I might have went on the attack after. I, I wasn't even in the bidding at all. It was like four, is that four or five hundred bucks? You know what I mean? And I decided to throw like six, six, six in. And it was funny just because I had like cash laying around and I was like, fuck it, you know? I got this, why not make this disappear as quick as I got it? Because I had done, done work or something. And I said, I'll throw it in. Everybody was assuming it was going to go for seven, eight hundred and things like that. I was like, I'll just do that just to whatever. And then just wound up winning it, you know what I mean? So $660 for a $2 VHS tape. Now that's some profit, baby. That changed everything. That made VHS something that people would really like turn their heads to and be like, what? You know, give it a second look. This sold for almost $700, this tape right here. That's insane. Like, what is this? Tales from the Quad Dead Zone from the creators of Black Devil Doll from Hell. That's not a really good reference point at all. Before I give you a lesson in pleasure, I'm gonna give you a lesson in pain. And it helped so much. It paid my bills for a whole month. Uh, and I think it really um, told us that VHS collectors are very serious people. I felt that that tape was rare enough, and I felt that it was kind of important a little bit to VHS. Like, I did. Like, I had conversations with people about, you know, this fucking tape is going to, like, m people are going to talk about this shit. My buddy, you know, even said, he's like, are you going to buy it? Like, you should just fucking buy it because people will, like, talk about you and shit. And I was like, I'm not going to, I'm going to put this 666 bid in, and I'm just going to let it sit, but I think it's going to go for eight, you know what I mean? And then I won, and then it's like, I kind of look like an asshole. <laughs> it's like I sit there like, oh, fucking Earl, he's fucking ridiculous. Take all this shit, but, you know, whatever, good or bad, it's like, I guess something, it kind of blew out the fact that collecting's kind of serious, you know what I mean? And people are serious about it. They're not Star Wars geeks. They're not people that, that you laugh at. Uh, they have money, and they're saying, hey, I want that tape. I'll give you some serious money for it. I'll sell my vehicle for that VHS tape. If I had an extra $600 to spend uh, when Tales from the Quad Ed Zone was on eBay, I would have paid every penny. If I'd have seen it, I'd have, won I'd have bid it. Because it, uh, that's, that's too low. That's too low, that's not enough. I'd have won that easy because see, I, my open, I'd have opened up like there and finished up at 1100, and that's and there's that's not a kid. I'm not joking a bit. No doubt, 1100 would have been my final on the quad dead zone, and I'd have won. Earl paid 700 dollars for this, and I, just a couple months after that, was 
uh, out at a porno store in New Jersey where I just bought like 300 tapes probably <laughs> between me and like two other people. We just filled a uh, convertible VW bug and then I get a call when we're on our way home saying there's a video store in Staten Island that is going out of business and selling their stock so you better run down there. <laughs> so we're like, okay, I guess we'll go there. It was a video store that must have been in business since day one. Bayware Video in Staten Island. Um, and they had everything. They had literally everything. And I saw this on the wall. And I had a heart attack. <laughs> I was just like... And I grabbed it. And like, I had already had like 20 tapes in my hand that I pulled. Like, And, you know, they're on the wall empty. And Harvey, the guy who runs the place, had them all behind the counter. You had to pull them. I had to drop all 20 tapes and put this up there and be like, hey, uh, this one, do you have this one? I didn't even think about the other ones anymore. And he pulled this one and I was like, all right, now I'll move on, as long as I got that one. And I paid $3.33, maybe? That's the dream, is to not have to spend more than a couple bucks on something because you found it, you know, because your hands are black with porno dust and you've been out all day breathing in gross weirdos, skin cells. That's why VHS collecting's fun to me. Um, I mean, I might not have like 40,000 tapes that I bought online, but I mean, I have tapes I like, and most of them I found in person. The fact that people are collecting strictly through the internet is really sad because it's such an amazing experience when you walk into a store, and nowadays it's usually like a store that maybe was a video store 12 years ago, and since then they've been selling beepers and cell phones, and they just like still have some some of that old shit in the back. And you are truly like spelunking. Like you are an archeologist of lowbrow culture. And like that's an adventure. Like it really is. It's not comparable to a food you like or good sex or like getting promoted. It's like it's a different thing of like it's, it's like the closest I'll get to like searching and finding treasure. Like being like I loved Goonies when I was a kid and just like that I wanted to be in that movie and find like the secret passage in this treasure, but I, as an adult, I have no interest in money or finding treasure, but like finding like a videotape of a thing that I've been looking for, or didn't even know I was looking for, just finding it and stumbling upon this magical thing is a, a great feeling. 90% of the time, you're going to find nothing, and it's going to suck, and you're going to get really excited, and then your day's just ruined, and you're just pissy towards everyone. And But the, those that r awkward, 10% where you're just like, your excitement, you're just like, oh, nerd boner. It feels like getting your first boner. Like, it's just like a rush of blood, like out of your head, you get lightheaded. It's almost always in some sort of store that is just completely dusty. You can't breathe in it. Um, your eyes get really big and then it's just, your eyes start to burn almost because those places are always filthy. I can't tell you how many times I have gotten cut open, gotten a cold, gotten sick from being in some dude's attic when it's raining or snowing, or going to a yard sale when no one else wants to go, going into the worst parts of town because I heard there's a tape store there. You're calling places, you're hunting, you're asking people, you're getting phone numbers of someone that might know something about maybe I have one in my garage. And I think that's awesome. I, I like that. I like that aspect of difficulty. If it was simple and I could just walk down to the store whenever I wanted and get it, there's no challenge, there's no appeal. Right here, it's probably two months of homework of every video store in five states that's still that's left. And I didn't call the store once or twice. I called them three times to make sure that, that we're still in business because the second time I did it, the link shrunk by about 40 stores and it was only like a four month period. Like every time I go anywhere, much to my friends and wife's chagrin, like I have to be constantly mapping out every little town we pass through and calling every number in the yellow pages just in case the store is still there. I mean, she had to stop me from breaking into an abandoned video store in Florida. We were in like the middle of nowhere in Florida and there's a store that was like shuttered up. You can look through the window and see there's still some tapes like in boxes. And I was like, well, the store's abandoned. Like I'm just gonna break the window and climb in. And she had to stop me. It was like two in the afternoon on a busy street. I'm like, I'm just gonna break the window. Like, you know, that obsession that comes from that great feeling that you, of finding that tape. And it doesn't happen often. One time I was at a thrift store and I smelled a tape and it was the worst smell I've ever smelled in my life. And 
I still talk about it and think about it. It smells like you went to a crust punk venue and every single dude had been pissing on one videotape for the course of like 40 years. And then they decided to like scrub their beards on it, like after they ate lots of like soup. And then they fucking like stuck it between their ass cheeks and ran like a marathon. And then they went to that thrift store and just put it on the shelf and they said, Phil, come here. It's a title you're missing. You need this title. Now smell it. And I did, and it was a fucking mistake. I think the best feeling about getting a tape is knowing that you can leave the creepy store you're in as soon as humanly possible because you genuinely feel like your life is in danger at a lot of these stores. There's fungus, there's probably asbestos, there's a guy at the front of the counter who clearly doesn't want you there because whatever front is going on, you're exposing it. This one I went into, uh, they have tapes like all over their tapes, walls of tapes, and they're like four deep and they're not in any order. They're like random as fuck. So of course I start digging and I'm moving shit around and like the place looks like shit, dude. Like the tapes are not organized at all. They're all over the place. So I'm thinking, oh, whatever, you know, I'm just throwing tapes around and trying to find cool stuff. and. I hear, what the fuck? What the fuck do you think you're doing? I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, like I didn't even know what I did. Like at first I'm like looking like, you know, did I step on something? Like what did I do? And he was like, you just fucked up my store, man. Look at this shit. And he was like pointing at the tapes. He's like, you just disorganized everything I set up. I'm like, looking around the place, I'm like, organized? Like, I was scared shitless. This guy was like big and he was getting in my face. And I was like, on the one hand, like, do I leave? Or would he get even more pissed? Should I organize this stuff? Like, I'm like trying to put tapes back, but should I touch him? Like, will he get even more pissed? Like, my heart was pounding. I'm like, oh, what do I do, you know? And I had, I had like stacks of tapes I was buying. I'm like, well, dude, I'm buying all these tapes. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck what you do. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should leave. And then back in my mind, I'm going, I really want these tapes. And I'm like, so can I keep looking? Or and he's like, I don't give a fuck. And I'm like, Okay, so I'm like carefully looking as he like mumbling and going back to the cashier and I'm like, man, I, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to buy this shit. Like, so I take up all the stacks of tapes and I'm like, I'm like so how much are these? He's like, well, they're five bucks a piece. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, now we gotta pay $5 a piece for all these tapes. And it's like, I bought at least a hundred tapes. And I was like, fuck, I, can I even say if I could put some back? Is he gonna get pissed? And he's all, uh, you're cool, man, $20. I'm like, oh, okay. He's all, all right, have a good day, man. I'm usually the only person checking out VHS tapes, and one day I noticed this guy, like, on my on my tail. I'm looking at tapes, the guy's like, oh, those tapes are a quarter piece, and this guy is immediately on the other side of the table, right over my shoulder. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, this can't be good, you know? Finally, I'm at a table that's got a nice big spread of all these tapes, and I'm like, okay. Here's, I'm going through them and I see him approaching and I've got pieces in my hand and some uh, terrible looking action movie. I mean like PM level stuff or something. And so I just set him down and I see him immediately go boom. <laughs> pick up a couple other things. I was like, I was like sizing this guy up. I'm like, who is this guy like looking for horror tapes too? Or he was like looking at pieces and I was like, as soon as he put it down, I'm like, oh, all right. He just thought it looked cool. <laughs> and Mom walks away and I'm like, thank you. How much are these tapes, sir? When he, when he got those, he's walking away. I'm like, hey, buddy. <laughs> and so we started chatting. We found out he did have a bunch of tapes. I thought maybe, I thought maybe he was just some dude like trying to flip them on eBay or something. So I asked him if he wants to sell me some tapes. And then that afternoon, I'm over at the house. I was like, hey, come over. Have some, have some breakfast and uh, look through my tapes and uh, come over for movie nights. And we've been hunting tapes together yeah. on and off since. Yeah. I love that there's an instant camaraderie when you meet another VHS collector. I've got serious friends, friends that I will always have, people that will be there forever because of a nerdy hobby. Those people, you make bonds that aren't easily broken. That's something that doesn't, you don't just forget about it. That's something that you don't see with other things either. It's just a weird 
you know, I guess magnetic material that we're all really attracted to. I was never on Facebook or anything. I didn't, I wasn't into that kind of deal. So they got to a point where I wanted to network a little bit and I noticed there was nothing for horror VHS and I kind of assumed there would be, I don't know why. So I just created a page and it was around the same time when I was talking to people uh, through email that were eBay people, you know, that like reached out to me, like Lewis Justin was one of the, he reached out to me through eBay. He noticed like I was sniping him out now and then, um, Ed McHale too, cause he, I started purchasing stuff off him and things like that. And then we were talking about VHS and then I kind of entered Facebook or whatever. And then I made a page and those guys all jumped on board and it kind of just kept going. Horror VHS Collectors Unite is amazing. If it wasn't for that page, a lot of stuff that I haunted and haunted and haunted for and looked forever, I wouldn't have in here right now. That's provided me with friends. That's provided me with people to talk to about my nerdy, crappy hobby that wastes all my money. That place is amazing. It's full of knowledge that's all free. It's full of people that really care. It's full of people that would bend over backwards to make sure that they can find you a copy of some horrible movie that you haven't seen just because they want you to see it, just because they're cool people. We're all family. Um... We all bicker sometimes, but for the most part, 95% of us, we all get along. We're like, um, we're all like Vietnam vets. We, we went into the jungles and we found those VHS tapes, so we got stories. Like, it's not just all these mystery people out there collecting tapes and saying, this is rare, or this is cool, or whatever. It's like... You're getting all the real knowledge about it, plus how popular it is, and plus if it's shot on video, what year, what label. And everybody knows that stuff, and people that don't know it are picking it up. I go through these these weird stages where I'm like, what if I just get rid of it all? What if I just empty my collection and not look like a hoarder for the rest of my life? But then I get on the group and you know, someone posts an awesome tape and I wanna get it, like, then I'm back on like uh, I don't even remember having those thoughts anymore no, I just blindly was just a VHS collector that randomly joined Facebook one day and blindly made a page to like see if people would come hang out you know and that was <clears throat> that was it but I think it's bringing I mean you can tell like we're it's getting pretty like loaded up like everybody's kind of coming to the same place to kind of talk about it Can I curse? Oh, yeah. I feel like it's fucking awesome. Yeah. I'd say for now. <laughs> no, I already thought. God. What are you asking for this? Oh, um, refrigerator, brand new. Uh, let me I'm see. Like, yeah, no, I. I really want to see it. I know there's like a DVD. It's fun. I got to meet a lot of cool people that I've been friends with online for like 10 years or so. So it's really cool to have one place for all of us uh, to get together and meet each other. So it's been really cool. I haven't even looked at enough VHS yet since I'm finally getting settled down from putting the show together. But I mean, it's an awesome turnout. It's awesome to see everybody in person and have, you know, have the whole crew here. And everybody gets to meet everybody and tons of tapes, tons of good tapes, not your flea market junk, you know, with lots of really rare stuff. Like, I'm surprised. I don't. I have $3 in my pocket. I didn't even spend anything yet. I got to go tap the Mac. I'm putting all some kinds of stuff on layaway and things like that right now. Cheers, man. My buddy sent me a link and it was an age verification for a website and you have to be at least 17 to get into this website. And the age verification was, what is this? And it was a picture of a VHS tape. And I was like, wow, like really? Like, is it that bad? Like, but I mean, yeah, like some people don't even like know what a VHS is. I think VHS was so vibrant, such part of everyone's life around the world for so many years, and there was so much product made that it's gonna take a long time for it to be dead, so to speak. Um, as a legitimate format, and especially when there is a ton of important work, film work, documentaries, how-to videos, uh, even home movies that are done on VHS that have yet to be discovered or archived or talked about or written about. If I can go home and watch it, if I can show it here, if it's not available on any other format, if there's no other way to see it, you know, how is it dead? How is it dead if there's multiple films about it? How is it dead if if people are excited about it and, and, and re-releasing 
and uh, putting out new releases on this format, you know. So for, for somebody to call it a dead format, I think is uh, premature. That this forums and you know websites and zines and magazines and all kinds of shit dedicated to VHS. Is, it's awesome. It's awesome that there's a movement now. VHS movement. The moment I think that sparked the VHS like resurgence, it, it started with the video invasion articles because obviously Horror Hound is a very popular esteemed magazine. And then of course the New York Times did articles like uh, the best zombies, the VH VHS won't stay dead. It's almost had like a second video boom. And it's, uh, that's one thing that's kind of cool. It's just everyone kind of got behind it. And it's almost like a movement. Outside of little pockets of folks that I know that are still into VHS, uh, I think most people are unaware that, the, you know, that there's a cult around this format. And that's what it is. It's a cult. You're not into some devil cult bullcrap, are you? That's not allowed in my neighborhood. It's really just been in the last few years that this revival of interest in VHS has come to the fore. It, I think it's always been within people but it's become an actual marketed product now that's been successful, I think, for the people who release in that format, for the right type of movies. With DVD being king for so many years, the idea that we'd ever release a, another VHS tape seemed, you know, impossible. You know, so, but lo and behold, we did it. It's The Basement, part of the Camp Retro 80s Big Box VHS DVD 5 Film Collection. Uh. The reaction was, was far better than it would have been if we released the film in 89. I own a handful of the new releases on VHS. Uh, I can get behind that. I think that's cool that in 2012, someone cares about putting out a movie on VHS tape. Uh, that's, it's kind of bizarre. I appreciate it, when, especially horror movies. If you're gonna release it on VHS, make a nice cover, do something cool, make it stand out, make it look like the tapes I remember when I was a kid. If you do that, and it's well put together and it looks professional, people like me are going to want it. People like me are going to hunt it down and look for it. You're gonna rip your fucking heart out for your eye socket. Oh, fuck. It'd be kind of cool if more bigger studios would get behind it and give it kind of that one little bump up, see what happens. I mean, vinyl came back, why can't tapes? Uh, we are planning to uh, uh, do a VHS release of uh, something now. I can't remember what it is. Uh, I'm not sure even why we're doing it. I think it's just our fans wanted us to do something with VHS. So I think we're, what What are we doing? What was it, Toxic Avenger? What are we doing? We'll do anything that our fans uh, tell us they will buy. But uh, uh, which one is it? Our mitzvah films if they were going to buy. Anyway, we're currently, we are currently preparing, I think, a VHS release of, of Toxic Avenger and I think maybe Poultrygeist. Uh, but it's only because our fans at conventions uh, seemed, some of them seem to be VHS uh, uh, nuts. The VHS culture has gotten weird. Because even on the Cartoon Network show, regular show, there is an episode about VHS where the characters are, they only will rent VHS and they will go to one video store because it has it and they lose this tape called the best tape in the world. What would it cost to just replace the tape? You're not gonna like it. Dude, just tell me. One thousand. A thousand dollars? It's a rare out of print VHS, a piece of film history. It's a piece, all right. Then they find the tape and some weird troll has it and it's like, and he's like trying to get them to read his VHS fanzine and it's just like, this is a kid show. So I mean, it's obviously came back and it's, I, I like it for the most part. Well, we fucking called this. We're like, we knew, like this shit is awesome. You can't fucking pick up some of these titles and be like, Never in the history of the world or anyone fucking find this cool again. Yeah, right. Well, I think the VHS comeback is like, it's something that's accessible to everyone right now. It's like treasure hunting, you know what I mean? Like, there's VHS all over the place, you know? And all somebody really has to do is say, oh shit, you know, I got 20 VHS up in my attic from 10 years ago. They're all my horror movies, you know? I'm gonna break them back out and I can grab some new ones and what the hell, throw them on the shelf and then suddenly like they want wizard video. You know, they didn't even know what the fuck wizard video was. And then they're like, shit, I need all the wizard video. There's people who are getting into VHS because it's a nostalgic throwback to an era that some of them weren't even alive during, <laughs> you know? But that's fine. Or And then there's people who are into it because this is the only way to watch some of these movies. Like there might be a more efficient way that takes up less space than collecting a bunch of tapes, but efficiency, in my estimation, has never equaled more fun. Like, oh, that's more efficient, hooray, like, wee, you know, it's just like, who cares? Like the fun comes from 
doing things the way that make you feel happy. And so I like watching tapes. There is this other universe of stuff out there that goes so far beyond, and it's still never ending. Like I'm still looking for stuff nonstop and digging, and it's, it's just, it's never gonna end until it does. It's alive! It's alive! I love that people are collecting it. I think it's just absolutely fabulous. Why do I love VHS? Because it's always been there and I never want to see it go away. They'll play right on. They'll be playing. I'll be long dead, and these VHS tapes will still be playing. Chicks love VHS. Yeah, they totally do. Oh man, you're such a dork. Fuck yeah. Make out with me. Okay. Girls don't collect VHS tapes enough. Have you guys noticed that? We need more big titted women who are single, by the way. VHS is cool today. Put it in your player and press play. It will always brighten the time. <laughs> Watching VHS makes you feel fine. VHS is the best. It's better than the rest. <laughs>